the boy in the building quite familiar. Um, I'm going to show for people who are beginners and use an FL Studio. Even if you're not, some people are not beginners. They know, you know, the preference of making a beat, but sometimes they don't know how to properly mix in their instruments. So this is a tutorial video. I'm going to show you the proper way how to mix in your instruments to make sure that you got a good sound of song, especially when you're making mixtapes, original music, and etc. I'm going to start with, I have a sample beat that I made for a particular artist that I'm working on right now at the current moment. So what I want to do, I'm going to work into it and I'm going to walk you step by step on how to blend in your instruments to make sure that it sounds good. It's two ways of doing it. One way is using the side panel. The second way is to go to the Fruity Mixer. The Fruity Mixer is a little more better. It's not advanced, but it's a little more better because you can actually take your instruments and put them on different tracks, just like if you want a real studio. It gives you a better feel of it. It's a lot of plugins that you can use, and also it gives you the feel of using a real mixer or a real trackboard. But today, I'm just going to show you how to use the side. This is good only if you have, you know, a good ear and a preferable knowledge of what you're doing. So right now... And don't get discouraged, even though you see this, this is just a drum pattern. We're going to work everything in. Right now, I have two samples, one right here and one right here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to work them in together. First, we're going to work in the first sample, as you will see right here. Like more smooth and the other ones a little loud, you want to try to blend them in. If they both want the same, then you know you can let it ride. But if you're combining them together, like I'm combining this one, whatever's your second sample, you want to make sure you properly blend it in with the first and make sure the second sample don't, you know, outshine the first or drown it out. Basically, you want them to blend this one. So, I'm going to let this play and I'm going to let you see exactly what I mean. Sample one and you have sample two. Now, being still because I have a R&B singer saying the sample two, you want to take it down, you know, just a notch, but blend it in slowly. Take your time, but make sure you blend it in slowly so it sounds good. And you give it a play. If it sounds low. Some people use snaps, claps, or snares. Some people use multiple snares. So what you preferably want to do is when you're working any instrument into the melody, you want to make sure that the instrument don't outshine the melody. In this particular beat, I'm using snares. Let me show you how that works. Now, standardly, it will be set at that rate. I'm going to highlight this because when you unhighlight it, it takes the instruments out. I always unhighlight all my instruments and leave just my melodies in, and I work them in one at a time. So right now, I'm just going to work in this snare. I'm going to start from a particular part of the pattern where the snares is in there.
Now, to most people, they would think this smell good. But actually, it's a little too loud. So let's go to bed. I'm not bringing the love. You can actually hear more of the melody, but the snares is worked in too. Now, the next thing you're going to do is when it comes to the kids. I like to do that because it's the particular way how I do it because sometimes I have different instruments that I bring into the song. So I always will go from if the snare claps, I'll go straight to the kids. That's what I'm doing. Now this particular one is using three different types of kits, not just one. Not too loud because even though it sounds good to you, you can listen to it in different things like a tablet, a phone, or a car, or even a different studio. It sounds totally different from what you're listening to. So the best thing is still focus on your melody and make sure the kids don't out drown. A wood instrument, a 
to try a little more fried salmon. This particular beef, I have a rib shot. It can be difficult, but it's not if you take your time and you know you just gotta explore your different varieties on how you want your percussions to come in. This one, I had to come in at particular times in the instrumental. Right and as you see, it's still a little loud when I just put it in. But what we're going to do, we're going to lower it down so it makes the beat ride nicely. Don't just brush and just turn things down and turn things up. Listen to it a couple times. And make sure that it fits right in the beat properly how you want it to. Now this one I have to turn up just a little bit. You still have to make sure that it comes in right. And that it sounds good. Now that's perfect. Now also, if you put it in a different effect like some people when they make beats, they like to put in vocals. It could be a sample vocal, their own personal vocal, or vocal that they tweak. A default vocal that come out the software. This one I had a vocal that I got off of the drum kit, which I'm going to work in. I did tweak it and change the pitch of it, so the voice is totally different, but you still going to work it. You want to make sure that won't draw nothing out, but even the sample. If you have a, a vocal sample already in there, you want to make sure that they put it in. So this one, I'm going to take it down some, and then I'm going to get right to the point where that sample comes in. I have two different sounds which are similar to AOEs. They're called trump shakers. And I have got that from off of a sound kit. Now I do have them already in the software. And I already have them pre-packaged. That's one, that's two. Now when you putting them inside of a beat. Even like an 808, if you got it up too loud, it will sound good. You know, it will rattle your speaker. But also certain, like I said, devices that you listen to it to, it's going to sound good, but it's going to be too much. And it also can drown out your melody. That's the main thing that will drown out your melody. So that's something you want to work it in, in the form of a bass. You want it just right. You don't want it too high. You don't want it too low. You want it just right. So... When you're working with any type of bass or 808, any type of bassy instrument, you want to turn it down halfway and listen to it first. So that way you can determine if it's too loud or not. See now this in particular is just a little too loud. That way you can still hear the kicks, you can still hear the melody, you can still hear all the other instruments, but you can also still hear the bass, the hand weights, or the trunk shakers or Now, not last, but not least, we're not done, would be the main thing a lot of people like to use is hats. High hats, open hats, just hats. You're using the hats, sometimes people who have beats sound like this. Like that. The hats are too loud. They sound good, yeah, you 
you might vibe to it, but they have some too long. So you definitely want to turn them down and you want to work them backwards. So you want to start from a low pitch and you want to work it up to a high pitch. Or if you turn it down like this, it fits right up to some. Some people use what is called a signature. As you see, I already have my pre-programmed into FL Studio, and I have an effect on there, which is the free delay. I know y'all already done heard my signature before, BT Entertainment signature. When you put your signature in, regardless whether you put it in the front, the middle, or the end of your song pattern or your song, that's one thing you never want to have loud. Have it loud enough that people can hear it, but not too loud that it still drowns out the beat. Now me, at the top of the rectangle, always put it lined up with the outer lining. That way it comes in right. It sounds good. You can just save it. And this is the beat. And it's called cool and entirely. Thank you. 